When I see people coming up for on partner track, it's interesting because, and I counsel and mentor a lot of people, um, there's not all the time, but often this discussion I have with some of the Asian associates, right? And I say, listen, you were told, be a good student, get good grades, behave yourself, you know, um, do all these things and, and, you know, the world will be right. I said, and honestly, the world was right because that's how you got here. You're the best and you're the brightest. But now the world is going to judge you by slightly different standards. But there's just something in us, all of us, who I know who are partners here that have this resilience in us that we get faced with a lot of challenges and a lot of doubt. And I can speak for all of us is that I know that we all have a lot of war scars because to get to where we are at our firms and become partner, we had to go through a lot. I just know that. That's a, that's that's pretty it's a inherent. Cost of entry. Yeah. You know, I have to make people who are making decisions forget as much as possible that I am different. I'm a minority. You know, the more that I I covered those aspects of myself, uh, the more you know I could find success. Whereas now, with you know more partners, more Asian American partners being mm -hmm. made, and mm -hmm. I think they can be more authentic. Yes, try to be your authentic self, but then yet we are covering and bending. So at a certain point, you have to kind of have this internal discussion with yourself of who are you, right? Yeah, it's and it's, it's sometimes it's a painful and emotionally difficult conversation to have. My first law firm, I had a partner come into my office every Pearl Harbor day, knock on my door and just say, hey, John, I just want to remind you, today's Pearl Harbor. And he did that every year for six years, overcoming that type of vocalized imposter syndrome. Here is a partner who is a very good lawyer telling me I'm an imposter. And then hearing that little voice in my head saying, you don't belong here. You don't look like anybody here. What are you doing in litigation? You should be this quiet Japanese girl who serves tea. <laughs> or whatever. The funny thing about finding our voice and owning our voice now is that it's a process. So I'm sure all of us, we had to put in our time. So lots of hard work, lots of sacrifice, because when we walk in the room, we don't get the automatic credibility. It's actually, we're at a disadvantage, I would say, where we might have all these things like unconscious biases and things of, you know, perceptions that are already you know, attributed to us, that's unfair. What, and, and the show kind of touched on this, if you watch the Netflix show, there's a difference between what a white man had to do to make partner at a large firm versus what all of us in this room had to do to become partner at a large firm. And it's a much higher threshold. And that goes back to my upbringing, you know, when I was trying to figure out how to assimilate in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And I remember my father said, you just have to do everything 10 times better than that blonde hair, blue eyed kid sitting next to you. Our white male counterpart was billing 2,000 hours to make partner. We had to do 2,500. If they had a book of business of 1 million, we had to be 3 million. Our path to partnership isn't the same. I mean, it is a heavy responsibility, and you know, I'm hearing we're in this room full of firsts. And I think our true responsibility and our legacy is to make sure that we are not the last. Well said. 100%.